Our group studies polycrystalline materials, and what I mean by that is, is almost all solid materials that you use are actually made of small microscopic crystals that are all bound together at grain boundaries within the material. And when you make it, these grain boundaries move. And uh, after it's cooled down and you begin to use it, the places where the, the ways the grain boundaries are fixed in place affect the properties of the material. This could be the strength of the material, its electrical properties, its optical properties. And so the positions of these grain boundaries and the way they're arranged are important for the properties of the material. Now, we would like to be able to predict exactly how they move during processing because that way when the material is cooled you would be able to predict the properties and then you would have a recipe for making a material that has the properties you want. Unfortunately that's not possible and we uh, are trying to learn how the grain boundaries move at high temperature so that we can make these better predictions. So what we did is we used a very new technique called um, high energy diffraction microscopy. It's an x-ray microscopy technique that allows us to look inside the material and, uh, and image these grain boundaries. And we recently made measurements about how the grain boundaries move at high temperature, and we were surprised to find that their motion is not predicted by the accepted theory. In other words, the, uh, we, we have a model for how the grain boundaries should move, but they don't move that way. And what that means is our simulations that uh, make predictions about the structure and property of the materials are not correct. So the, these are uh, very interesting findings to us and, and it, it uh, stimulates us to look closer to understand can we develop models for how these grain boundaries move and make good predictions. And we think currently there's two reasons why the theory didn't, doesn't work. Um, the one is very simple that all these boundaries are interconnected with each other. In fact, each grain boundary is connected on average to 10 other boundaries. And so its motion has to be in concert with all of those others. And the second is that grain boundaries are all different. And I, by different, I mean different in a structural sense. And they all don't behave the same either and can't be governed by a single theory. So our group is going to spend the next several years um, with a new grant to try to develop um, a better theory for how grain boundaries move at high temperature that we can then use to predict uh, the, the structural development of materials and their properties.